us into those turbo spool. Go, baby, go! Now we gotta stop this. All right. Yeah, these power stops are really nice. What's going on everyone? So today's video, I'm gonna be talking about my airlift system and we're gonna be putting the boat in the water because, well, that's pretty much why I got the airlift airbag system for my truck. Because my trailer over there, don't really need it with the new shocks, but it's nice to actually have it, pump them up. With the truck itself, Sometimes I carry heavy loads that require the airlift system. Well, not require it, but it's nice to have it for it. So, so far I'm actually really liking, liking the system. But I'm going to do something really quick here, and I'm going to show you guys in just a second. So let me go do that, and I'll be right back with you. Alright, so Steven, this one is for you. Uh, you pointed out that there's a bolt near the hitch for the Schrader valve for this air system. Now I thought you were talking about this bolt at first, which that might be the one you're talking about. However, for the plastic here, there's these clips, these like push pin clips. I just ripped that out and the Schrader valve ended up fitting in there. I had to just hone it out a little bit because it's an oval, but I mean the hole's already there. It's not a new hole I had to drill. And you can pretty, almost not even tell that the Schrader valve's there. So if you guys are installing this system, look into that if you don't want to drill any new holes into your truck. But otherwise the air ride system is uh doesn't look new anymore, but that's okay. Alright, let's get on the road and go get the boat hitched up and put it in the water and I'll talk to you guys more about the airless system. So I'm following behind one of the new 2019 Silverados. Can I just say that back end is ugly. Like, I thought the front was ugly, but honestly, I have to go around them. I'm sorry. I can't look at it anymore. All right, guys, so we just got to the boat. I'm going to take a quick measurement here from the hubcap. Not the hubcap, but whatever that is. I guess it's a hubcap. To the wheel arch, which is about 22 inches. And then same thing on this side from the hubcap. This is really hard. One hand to the wheel arch is about 22 and a half, which I'm kind of on uneven ground. Then we're gonna hook up the truck to the trailer, see how much it squats, and then we'll raise the airbags back up. All right, so trailer hitch is on my Gen Y hitch. I have to flip it over and raise it up one. Have not put air in the airbags yet. And we've only squatted an inch and a half, it looks like. Let's check the other side. And this side's at 21, which it was at 22 and a half, so yeah. Which the airbags stay at a constant 5 PSI because I did not get the ones that have the bump stop built into them. So they're always at 5 PSI. However, when uh, we were just lowering the trailer onto the hitch, it put pressure on the airbag system which caused the PSI to rise and it just released some but now that we have the wireless remote we're going to turn it on and I have it set to 25 well I have 5 as memory 1 and then 25 as memory 2 for my trailer so we'll see how much it raises with that if anything we'll adjust it more All right, let's re take a new measurement and see where it's at. Well, it's at 21 now. What was it before? 22? Yeah, so we'll take it up a little bit more. And then we'll set the memory for memory three. Let's go up to 35, see what that does. All right. Take a new measurement again, and we're right about 21 and three quarters, 22. 
Well, I think that's right. So I'll leave it there. And what I'll do now is set the memory for it. So to set memory, it's turn it on. Push any button for it to turn on. And then press and hold. Oh, nope, that's not what I wanted. Yeah, there's memory one, memory two, and then both at the same time are memory three. Ah, there we go. So press and hold both buttons. And now memory three is set for 35 PSI. So memory one is five, which is empty. Memory two I have set for 25, which is my trailer, my enclosed, and now we have memory three set for the boat trailer. And I think it, I think it's pretty level. If anything, I might adjust it higher. So let's go throw the boat in the water and I'll be right back with you guys. Can I just add, this is not particularly the best uh, weather for putting a boat in, but Sorry about the wind noise, it actually just got really windy. And as you can see here, the truck is sitting really nice and level. Actually, it might be the ground, but it looks a little spotted. But otherwise, boat sitting all the way up in the front here. And yes, the trailer is a little long, I would say, for this boat. But the problem is, we can't push this guy back anymore because well we ran out <laughs> of room so but I mean it works we kept the boat stored like a mile away this year not by the house so we just we just had to pull it down the street pretty much right now all I can think is I hope my brakes don't fail because I got all the weight of the boat behind me and the only thing stopping me are my brakes right now. The boat was cold starting. I can say that. Sounds like it has a cam though. Alright, so the boat is off the trailer now, and I did bump it up to 50 PSI, so now we're gonna go back to memory one, which is five. As you can hear, it's letting out the air. Now we're gonna go, I'm gonna put this back up here. Now we're gonna go meet up with my father on the other side. Alright, well the boat's in the water. And I just went to go leave and we went to go test the lights after pulling the trailer out of the water. And the one bulb wasn't working. We take it apart. The bulb itself had water inside. Like inside the glass housing there was water. So my father's on the way to go get another bulb. I'm really cold right now because it's like 30 degrees. And I was not fully prepared for this weather today. However, that's okay. I'm warming up. So... Let me talk about the airlift system. Honestly, I think it's a great system. So far it's worked for me very well. It's the 5,000 pound rated system. I have the wireless one, which is set for both airbags, one line for both airbags that pressure up. The wireless two system, the new one, 
you can set each airbag differently, which I think is kind of cool. Or, I don't know if this would work, but if you hooked up both airbags on one line, and let's say a air tank on the second line, you can theoretically pump up the airbags with one line and the tank with another. This way you can have onboard air and only have to run one compressor instead of two separate ones on your truck. But enough about that. Let me get back to the airbags. So they've been on the truck for about 5,000 miles. I've honestly have not had a single issue with them. I think I do have a small leak, but when I installed them, it got cold again. It was warm when I installed them, got cold, so I never got back under the truck to check for leaks. So I have to be checking that come warmer weather, so probably in the next coming week or so, I'll be going through the system, checking for leaks again. But otherwise, I've never had, I haven't had an issue with it one bit. It pumps up every day which I shouldn't say every day. I have it set to 25 PSI every day because I don't really unhook my trailer. I tow my trailer pretty much every day with the truck and the airbag system and it's been holding up pretty well. Yeah, it's a little bit rougher of a ride when it's empty it feels like, but that's just because this system has to stay at five PSI. But honestly, it's, it's gonna be a truck. It is kind of a rough ride in the first place. But the system, I'm very happy with it, as you guys saw today. Had the boat on it, worked the way it's supposed to, pumped up to 50 PSI, held it. Didn't have it on for long, but I will say this, definitely felt more controlled. So last time I towed that boat, even that short distance, with the truck squatting how it was, I did not feel confident in doing like a long haul. So I'm talking, two plus hours drive with that boat behind me. Now with the air ride system, yeah, I feel more conf I would feel more confident in doing a two hour drive, but only if it was nice weather conditions. Like right now it's kind of windy out, it's blowing pretty hard. I think it's like 10 mile an hour winds, 10 to 15 with the gust maybe. And something like this, I would not tow something that big behind this truck with just because, yeah, I can physically pull it, but if a wind catches me, that's it, it's over. And that's that's something I want people to understand. When you tow something, yeah, you can handle nine to 10,000 pounds with a half ton truck, but can you recover it? Can you take control of that item behind you? No? then get a bigger truck or don't even think about towing that item unless you know it's gonna be great weather conditions, you can handle it and you feel confident in your abilities. And I will say this airlift system definitely helps with that. So that's with the boat. Now going back to my trailer, with my trailer, I tow it every day. I towed it, I put 12, I've put 12,000 miles on that trailer since installing the trailer brake controller. And going from towing that trailer with the original shocks to Bilstein shocks to Bilstein plus my airlift system, honestly, it actually is a lot smoother of a ride, especially when I had the airbags pump up, pumped up to 25 PSI. I've had it where it was empty and I put them on the 25 PSI rate setting. And honestly, it is a smoother ride with the airbags pumped up. It's it, You would think it's gonna be harsher, but no, it's it's a lot smoother. It settles really quick, which I shouldn't say like quick, quick, but it doesn't keep bouncing around, which I do, that does help with the drives every day. Honestly, the airlift system, I haven't had issues with it. I put 5,000 miles on them since installation. I'll probably be doing a long term, longer term review on them later on, probably maybe around 20, 25,000 miles, we'll see. So after a year of having them on most likely, and we'll see if any issues arise. Otherwise I'll keep you guys updated on them. I'm happy with them. I'm glad I spent the money on it and with the wireless one system, because this way it just clips to my visor near my garage door opener that I actually don't use because I don't park in the garage. Stays out of the way, didn't have to run anything in the cab. Super thrilled with it. And I did finally mount that air valve 
in the back bumper. I don't think that was the exact spot you were talking, maybe it was, but otherwise it's there. The Schrader valve is mounted up, so if you ever, I've, if I ever need to get to it, I can more easily. So I'll end the video here. I'll finish off by saying it's finally boating season up in Illinois, even though it doesn't feel like it today, but it is. Warmer weather's on the way. I need to get my jet ski up and running so I can start ripping that thing this summer. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. If you didn't, go ahead and give it a dislike, but let me know what I can prove on for next video. And as always, guys, if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. And I will catch you later. Bye. Y'all, this Lexus up here, his license plate is WNKR. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure that says what I think it says. And he's gone. But yeah. Um, okay. That's cool. <laughs>